title of my sermon this morning is based on a piece of modern art. The artist, 42-year-old Hank Willis Thomas, is a contemporary artist who works across a variety of media, including sculpture, photography, textual art, and much more. Two pieces by him are prominently displayed at the North Carolina Museum of Art in Raleigh. When I was there most recently, I enjoyed seeing them both. His work is also featured as a permanent installation at the National Memorial for Peace and Justice in Montgomery, Alabama. And while I have your attention and you're all here on this Easter Sunday, let me sort of throw out there, let me name an intention. I think it would be a fun thing an important thing, a meaningful thing, if our church took a field trip to the National Memorial for Peace and Justice in Montgomery. Just throwing that out there. I can't claim this is my idea. A couple church members have been whispering in my ear about it, and so I'd like to imagine that, that idea just floating through and, and me whispering it to you. Maybe it'll happen. The piece of art that inspires this sermon this morning is a piece by Hank Willis Thomas. It appears in the Yerba Buena neighborhood of San Francisco. It's actually the, the a picture of what it looks like is on the cover of your order of service, although that picture doesn't do it justice. It is a giant neon sign reading love over rules. You can't miss it. Each letter is six and a half feet high meaning in total it's, it's over 22 feet from top to bottom. Love over rules. Perhaps three words, perhaps two, love over rules. And I want you to imagine, it might be hard in this beautiful sunlit sanctuary with classical music, giant flashing neon sign <laughs> that I want you to imagine. There's a story behind it. Love over rules were the last words of the artist's cousin and best friend, Songa, who was murdered senselessly a decade and a half earlier as part of a mugging gone awry over his friends, over a friend's gold bracelet, gold necklace. And as his friend was victimized, he supposedly spoke those words, love over rules. Here is the artist speaking about the piece. He says, love is a verb of action. Its meaning goes beyond the romantic idea of it. Love is an invitation to people to stand up and be generous every day of their lives. It is not an action of receiving, but rather an action of giving. My question as an artist is what you do to give love. And how is love breaking the rules you have in your life? For many in the Christian tradition, this past week was Holy Week. During this week, Christians contemplate and remember the last week of Jesus' life, his death, and the miracle of the empty tomb. As part of this remembrance, on Good Friday, there is often a time of contemplation of what are known as the seven last words. These are the seven sayings spoken by Jesus on the cross. And though there is no record of it in the Gospels, I can imagine Jesus speaking those same last words that were spoken by the artist's cousin. Love over rules. Or maybe, just maybe, these words were spoken by Jesus. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Love over rules. I can imagine Jesus speaking these words as his dying words because they were words he spoke time and time again in his parables. 
and because these were the words he lived over and over again through his life and ministry. Jesus broke the rules, was a rule breaker, was a rule breaker for love. Jesus broke the rules of the Roman Empire. He broke the societal rules of his time and place, rules about whose lives mattered, rules of hierarchy and status and gender. Jesus broke cultural taboos. And he broke interpretations of religious law when those interpretations of law stood in the way of love. According to a piece authored just yesterday by Reverend Dr. William Barber, quote, the gospel story is clear. Jesus is numbered with the transgressors. We cannot forget the politics of Easter, Barber continues, that Jesus was crucified as a criminal because the movement he had started threatened the established order maintained by political and religious authorities of the day. Love over rules. Before I continue, allow me to step back just a little bit, because whenever there is a conversation about law and love, we need to uh, approach that conversation in a very mindful and careful way. Because throughout history, these conversations have often been places for expressing anti-Semitism. The argument has been made that Judaism is legalistic and that Christianity came to replace or supersede the dead legalisms with the gospel of love. And that narrative has been used through the years to disparage Judaism and to propagate anti-Jewish conspiracy theories. And so any discussion of love and law needs to acknowledge this history and the harm this narrative has caused. There are a couple of things I'd like to say here. First, if you have any familiarity at all with Jewish religious thought, you would know that cold, dry adherence to law is the furthest thing from how the tradition is practiced. There is a lively tradition of arguing, even arguing for argument's sake, and that tradition leads to incredible ways of interpreting commandments in ways that promote love and promote justice. And second, when, when Jesus spoke about the law and of love, he was speaking as a Jew. He was operating from within Jewish tradition. And when he critiques one interpretation of Judaic law, he's offering another from within the tradition. Fundamentalism can be found in every religious tradition. Hear what Presbyterian minister Mark Sandlin, <coughs> serves a church in Greensboro, writes about what we might learn from Jesus' life in terms of love. Mark Sandlin writes, the actions that separate us from God are unloving actions. And I believe Jesus came to teach us that the law was designed to help us avoid those kinds of unloving actions. I believe that Jesus came to show us what the fullness of love looks like in action. It looks like healing people who are hurt and feeding those who are hungry. It looks like loving people who are shunned and defending people who are overwhelmed. It looks like friends sharing together and grieving over the loss of a friend. It looks like a conversation over a drink of cool water. It looks like helping the celebration along at a wedding. It looks like helping the lost find meaning in life. Jesus died, Sandlin concludes, because love would not sit silently by as those who had little were being stepped on, used, and abused by those who had so very much. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. These words could have just as well have been speaking about those who follow orders, who obediently carry out instructions and commands, who follow rules of empire. These could have been spoken about those who passively tolerate evils of oppression and violence. In the world in which we live, 
We should all have been taught that saying I was just following orders or I was just doing as I was told is never an acceptable excuse. I was just following the rules is no defense. And that's why I find this art installation by Hank Willis Thomas so spectacularly striking. A 20 foot high flashing neon sign that says love over rules. And the question the artist poses to us, how is love breaking the rules you have in your life? According to my faith, it is malpractice to talk about the way in which Jesus died 2,000 years ago without also asking where the cross is today in our times, who is being crucified in our time and place. According to my faith, it is malpractice to celebrate with alleluias, a resurrection 2,000 years ago, without also noting and recognizing those in our time and place who are resisting, those who are working against the deadly and destructive powers of empire here and now. We might ask who is being crucified today, crucified by poverty, by mass incarceration, by lack of health care, by extremist hatred, by family separation, It's hard to imagine now, but historians of the Roman Empire tell us that crucifixion was actually rather commonplace. Horrific, but not unusual. Barbaric, but not out of the ordinary. It happened, in fact, with such frequency that the culture grew a little desensitized to it. As I reflected on the Holy Week, and on this lead up to Easter, here in 2019, there was a story that came into my consciousness and haunted me. The story involves a young man named Alec, who died last year at the age of 27. Alec was diabetic. Once he was dropped from his parents' health insurance, the cost of insulin was more than he could afford. And so he began to ration his insulin, dying three days before his next payday, and less than a month after going off his mother's insurance. His death is described this way. Diabetic, ketoacidosis is a terrible way to die. It's what happens when you don't have enough insulin. Your blood sugar gets so high that your blood becomes highly acidic, your cells dehydrate, and your body stops functioning. It seems to me that Alec was crucified. And as I reflect on this story, there is not one single villain who I can point to. There are, though, a whole set of rules Rules that stood in the way of life. Rules that stood in the way of love. The rule that says that health care and that medicine is only for those who can pay. The rule that puts profit over people. The rule that says that suffering alone is more virtuous than asking for help. It's a story it begs us to imagine a world in which love overrules. The story of Easter brings with it a flip, a reversal. Jesus was a preacher of reversals, of first being last, and Easter brings with it that most paradoxical of reversals. That reversal of death not being the final word. Of life out of death. 
Easter brings with it those reversals, those reversals of a people who are grieving and hurting and scared, who comfort one another, who tell stories, who turn in the direction of hope. It is a reversal of love overruling. So as you go forth this day, I invite you to go forth with an image, an image of a 20-foot flashing neon sign before you. If only the world had more of those signs. A sign declaring that love overrules. And I invite you to go forward with a question question of which rules the power of love is asking you to break. Go forth in peace and joy and hope. <coughs> Amen and blessed be. Freely have we received a gifts that minister to our needs of body and spirit. Gladly we bring to this church and its wide concerns a portion of that honor. Today our generosity extends beyond these walls to M.C. Warren. And please, if you're making out a check, uh, put the community church and then put STP on the memo line. We will now receive the morning offering.